In this video, we'll look at how logging works to prevent data loss in the event of system failures or unexpected interruptions. Now, in our KDB architecture, the incoming data feed could actually be written directly to the RDB or the other subscribers, but it's usually written to the KDB process called the ticker plant, as we've seen in our course so far. So this ticker plant process is super important as it crucially writes all incoming records to a log file. And this is probably the most important aspect of our whole KDB architecture and ticker plant system. And the key addition here being the binary log file, which contains the data for the current date written by the ticker plant, which can be used to restore the systems should the RDB process crash or require restarting for whatever reason. So let's take a look at what this looks like now on our system. So I'm just opening a new terminal here and running LS inside of it. We can see we've got this SIM file here. So this is our binary log file. And for, notice for each new date here, we'd actually have a new log file. So we only have one so far for today's date. So let's start a new queue process to inspect these log files. And doing this in a separate process is generally a good idea. And I wouldn't recommend loading your log files this way in any of your production processes in a real life setup. This is because what we're about to run will load the entire ticker plant log file into memory, which could potentially cause your server to crash if it's a large enough file, which it can typically be in many gigabytes or terabytes. So we're going to use the get command to load the log file. So first of all, let's launch our Q script and we can say get backtick and then we just pass it the name of the file. So it's sim2024 and we've got data for the 16th. So that's a little bit truncated. So I'm just going to change my console size, which I can use backslash C in Q to do that. And we get, we can see here all of our data. So we've got rows for both our quote and our trade table, because we obviously have data coming from a feed handler for both of these. And what this data is, is an essentially a list of lists with three elements. The first one being this UPD function name, which is the command that's instructing the real time subscriber to know what to do when the process comes back up. And then we have the table name itself. And then as well, we have that data itself as a list. And that looks exactly like our dummy data that we created back in our previous module. Now that's what a log file looks like, but let's simulate a system failure in our architecture to understand the recovery behavior in more detail. So first we have a few handy environment variables on our ticker plan process. We've seen .u.w earlier. Now I wanna have a look at .u.i. And what this is doing is giving me a number of how many records are logged in the log file. So you can see that's increasing similarly to the size of my trade table. Now let's kill our RDB process, which was this one up the top we had running from earlier. We did the double backslash again. And then if we check .u.i, we can see that's still increasing. Even though I no longer have an RDB active, our feed handler, which was over here, and I apologize for the screens, but um, if you remember, we had launched our feed handler over here. This is still pumping data and our ticker plant is still capturing it and logging it. So I'm going to stop the feed handler next, just so that we can keep an eye on the counts a bit closer. So if we kill our feed handler, or I can actually just tell it to stop with the backslash T, zero, that's setting the timer to zero, we can see dot u dot i no longer increases. Now let's restart up our RDB again and see what happens. So if we look at our trade table, we can see there is data there. And if we run a count on that, we can see we now have 4,456 records. So the same as what we have for our log file. So all of the records that have been captured in the log file down here from the beginning of the day, because this log file is one day's worth of data. If we had multiple days, um, it would only reload the data for today, because that's what we want in our RDB. And we can see now we have all of those records loaded back in. So how is that doing that? Well, that's all built into the custom behavior in the rdb.q script. In here, we have these functions .u.rep um, defined and then being run here. And this is basically telling the rdb upon a restart, replay the log file to preserve the integrity of the data. And the core piece of the function that's doing that is this minus 11 exclamation mark, also known as bang <laughs> in KDB. And that's the replay function. And that does all the work here, safely replaying the log file to the subscriber process. And it does that row by row so that in the case of having really large log files in the gigabytes of size, 
that means because it's row by row, it's safely loading it in so that it's not going to crash. Unlike what we did down there, we use the get command to load everything in at once. So diving into all of the code in this file is beyond the scope of what we're going to cover in this course. But I wanted to show you where the functionality of the replay happens, as it's a key feature of the overall architecture. Now we can restart the feed if we want to see what happens. So you might guess if we set this to be every one second again, our trade table starts to have data again and dot u dot i increases as well. Now, so we've been able to simulate an RDB going down and we can see how it's been restored safely. Now I'm going to have some links to really great white papers on this functionality, which goes into what I've shown here in more detail. It also covers how log files can become corrupted and the various solutions that exist for fixing that scenario. But that's it for this module on logging and recovery. We've covered how logging works at a high level. We've simulated a failure on our RDB and we've seen how the system can manage this with no data loss by replaying the log file. Okay, try the quiz to test your knowledge as always before moving on to the rest of the modules.